What if our children were to ask us, how was it to live in a world where nature didn't have rights? What if everybody lived with the understanding that if we harm nature, we're harming ourselves? That would be an amazing world. In Ecuador, we're already doing that. Ecuador is still the only country in the world that has recognized nature as a subject of rights in its constitution. We have places that are maybe the most biodiverse places in the world. However, our authorities always justify extractivism. They justify mining, they justify oil. We need to change our relationship with nature. Ecuador, a country about the size of Nevada, has perhaps twice as many plants and animal species as the U.S. and Canada combined. This biodiversity hotspot in South America has a stunning variety of habitats, coastlines with deserts and mangroves, snow-capped mountains, and the iconic Galapagos Islands. But it's the rainforests where much of the biodiversity thrives. Much of it remains unknown. We only know a little bit of what we have in our country in biodiversity terms. So many, many species are still being discovered in the rainforest. Unfortunately, Ecuador is a developing country. It, it faces a lot of threats uh, of activities that will definitely destroy its biodiversity and, of course, will lead to the extinction of many species. Extractive industries like oil, mining and timber, unsustainable agriculture and now climate change are all endangering this vibrant land all these things coming together are going to cause a catastrophe. Between 1990 and 2008, Ecuador lost over a million acres of rainforest. Hoping to stem that tide, Ecuadorian environmentalists turned to a radical idea. The rights of nature was an idea that was very new. It was only in 1972 that Christopher Stone wrote about the rights of nature. Stone was a law professor whose book, Should Trees Have Standing, argued that nature itself deserves legal rights. The concept is opposite of how most countries' legal systems treat environmental laws. Environmental law is just telling us how much we can harm nature. It's not telling us to protect nature. In 2008, when Ecuador rewrote its constitution, Natalia Green and other activists pressed to ensure that the rights of nature were enshrined into the law of the land. Ecuador became the first country in the world to recognize that nature has a legal right to exist. The statute gave conservationists a powerful new tool in their fight to preserve wild spaces, a tool that is now being put to the test in Ecuador's species-rich cloud forests. These high-altitude rainforests are persistently covered in clouds and a vital source of water for animals, plants, and people in the region. In order to study a cloud forest carefully, you need to focus on a particular group of organisms. Over the 25 years that I've lived in Ecuador, I investigated the distributions of orchids, and I discovered many new species that no one knew existed. So I had discovered these hot spots of local biodiversity that I knew were special, but nobody else knew. Most people know orchids from the hardware store or the supermarket, but most orchids are tiny, I mean really tiny, the size of my fingernail sometimes. Lou has mastered the hunt. He even discovered one of the world's smallest orchids, 
just two millimeters across. I, very, very cool, very complex. These are pollinated by little tiny flies, usually. This is a, an epidendrum. Over a thousand species of epidendrum exist, and Ecuador has 400 species of these. Lou realized that these miniature flowers offer not only a tasty sip for hummingbirds, but also a banquet of data on the health of the ecosystem. Orchids are so particular about where they grow that we can use them as bioindicators of differences between forests. One mountain has one set of orchids, and a neighboring mountain has a different set of orchids. And those orchids are indicating that there's something different about the climate of those two mountains. And so we can use them to guide us towards a logical conservation strategy that will protect all the biodiversity. The first step of Lou's conservation strategy was to protect some of the most biodiverse hotspots. My friends and I got together and formed this foundation called Ecominga. We began a campaign of international and national uh, fundraising to purchase these most special areas and create protected gradients along slopes of mountains so that plants and animals could move up and down them uh, as climate changed. 14 years ago, Lou brought in Javier Robayo, an Ecuadorian environmentalist, to manage the project. Usamos los sitios donde hay alta diversidad de orquídeas para que dirijan nuestro trabajo. We're trying to protect the whole landscape biodiversity, not just a few parts. It's all one system with animals and plants traveling between them. It's important to catch all of the diversity that's there. Some of the land in these cloud forests is farmed and the only source of income for the local owners. A few grow cash crops, like naranjilla, a popular local fruit that is lucrative but requires extensive land clearing. After just a few harvests, the soil becomes so degraded it can no longer support the crops. So many farmers simply move on and cut down another tract of forest. To help break that cycle, Lou and Ecominga are helping farmers shift production to environmentally friendly crops. Marco, Javier, Lou. Laura, qué gusto. Hola, Lou, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás, Marco? ¿Cómo vas? Te presentamos a Laura. Laura, qué gusto. ¿Cómo estás? Y yo estoy Javier, feliz de ver. Qué bien, qué lindo proyecto Mira. tienes. For generations, Laura Elena Yepes Plaga and her family have farmed naranjilla. But now, Ecominga has helped Laura grow another crop that can earn her just as much money on a lot less land. It's an orchid prized for its fragrant spice, vanilla. La vainilla se le puede cultivar orgánico. En cambio, la, la naranjilla es más químicos. Incluso también deforestaríamos más montaña y aquí no porque no utilizamos tanto espacio. This is a pilot program and Laura is Ecominga's first farmer trained to grow vanilla. Javier Robayo and orchid expert Marco Monteros check in often to offer support. Ya casi nueve años hemos trabajado en pensar, pensar cómo poder cambiar el valor del trabajo de la, de la agricultura. ¿Han tenido flores? Sí, bastantes, en este mes. These vanilla orchids are ripe for pollination. Bueno, por ahora la temperatura eh, tenemos 28. Uh -huh. eh, de humedad, 73.6, ¿no? Ajá. the temperature and humidity are optimal. In Mexico, where vanilla grows wild, it's pollinated by a species of bee found only there. Here, it's up to Laura to perform the delicate procedure. Toca tener mucho cuidado en cogerlo de no se rompe. 
una experiencia muy linda. La plantación de vainilla puede ser una alternativa de sostenibilidad en el largo plazo. The project benefits the environment, and because it requires much less of Laura's time, it improves her quality of life. He cambiado mucho mi vida. E incluso estoy estudiando porque yo estudié antes, pero no en un año y medio terminaría la la secundaria. Puede ser beneficioso para el ambiente y también para cada una de estas familias. No definitivo porque es complejo. Solutions like these will help Ecominga protect local biodiversity without invoking the Constitution's rights of nature. When Ecominga can, it also purchases land, which is how it created the Dracula Reserve. Named after a group of orchids with fang-like petals, this 5,300-acre refuge is nestled between two large protected areas. Nuestro principal objetivo es la protección de áreas con alto nivel de endemismo y altos niveles de amenaza. Ecominga discovered that many species are found only here. But beneath the cloud forests lies another kind of treasure, a mother load of mineral resources coveted by mining companies. Casi el 20% de todo nuestro territorio está entregado en concesiones mineras. Hemos podido nosotros evidenciar que el trabajo de exploración inicial dentro de nuestra reserva ha llevado a destruir lugares completos, hábitats completos. So Javier makes it a priority to connect with local communities and let them know Ecominga wants to purchase and protect their land. Today, he is visiting a region called Esperanza, which means hope. The residents own a tract of undeveloped forest. They'd like to profit from the holding, but the local leader has qualms about selling it to a mining company. La minería nos va a traer consecuencias a posteriores, le digo. Aquí tenemos que entrar al tema, le dije, de no a la minería, Con ellos nos vamos. Con lo que vamos a no a la minería. Ahí es para frenar. Ecominga would offer a fair price for the land. But mining companies often pay higher than market value and pay more quickly. For the community, safety is also a factor. Cuando la montaña se va destruyendo desde sus bases, produce grandes derrumbes y se puede llevar, limpiar cientos de metros, sin tomar en consideración que todos estos derrumbes pueden llevarse vidas humanas. When a nearby community allowed mining, the increased risk of landslides had a direct impact on Esperanza. Hace unos seis años, desde el 2003, como que sale, yeah. vinieron a un estudio que esto es, tiene peligro. La, de pronto un deslave, uh -huh. entonces ya prohibió hacer las casas. Many in Esperanza would prefer to sell to Ecominga, if the foundation can drum up the cash. Javier has connected with other organizations to help raise the money. One new partner with a fresh approach is Reserva, the Youth Land Trust. We are youth-led and passionate about the environment and biodiversity conservation. Not everyone is lucky enough to have nature in their life from an early age. But every young person now is growing up with the reality of climate change and the reality of nature and biodiversity loss. Cali Brada started Reserva after a family tragedy. Finley Bratis was my sister. And 
She was six years younger than me. And when she was 17 years old, she was diagnosed with a rare and aggressively fatal cancer. She moved into a hospital and was really frustrated by her lack of ability to continue the climate change advocacy that, that she had been doing for years. So she thought, maybe I could start a fund. So she set a goal of raising $18,000 by her 18th birthday. This ability to do something was so empowering for her that it alleviated a lot of the pain of her situation. By the time she passed away, she had raised over $100,000 to fight climate change. Finley's passion ignited a new calling for Callie and set her on her current path. I realized that a young person who's just turned 18 has incredible financial power to make an impact on these crises that we're facing. Callie quit her job in 2019 and founded Reserva. The organization has mobilized and partnered with youth in over 25 countries. Expanding Dracula was their first project. Reserva is working with Ecominga to protect all of the wildlife that depend on this region. In 2019, we began a flagship project to create the world's first entirely youth-funded nature reserve. This addition to Dracula will be called the Dracula Youth Reserve. Fundraising takes time, but some landowners planning to sell to Reserva allow access for research before the purchases are complete. One such foray led to a disturbing discovery. In August of 2021, some of the Ecominga team were surveying for new species. This forest land adjacent to Dracula Reserve belongs to local farmers Fermin and Leonor. Their family has owned this plot for over 60 years, and they are hoping to sell it to Ecominga to make sure it stays protected and intact. Marco went out on a hike looking for orchids, and he came back with some devastating news. He found 400 meters of destruction of a pristine canyon made by mining companies. Lo único que se me vino a la mente fue, este es el inicio del final. Me dio mucha rabia. To track down the miners, Callie and Javier took to the skies. We put a drone up into the air. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. We located their camp, and the next morning, we hiked in at about 5 a.m to confront them and find out who they were working for. Buenos días. They learned that the miners worked for a large international company with a government concession, but they were surveying on land they had no right to be on. Estoy yo totalmente claro que hemos siempre dicho que no pueden entrar a nuestros precios. La naturaleza no tiene voz. ¿Quién habla por la naturaleza? La gente. Es nuestro trabajo. Javier and Ecominga prevented the miners from doing any more damage to the land. But they realized that persuasion alone would not protect the entire region. So Javier meets with Natalia Green for advice on how to build a case for the rights of nature. Esta es una imagen de tomada desde la parte baja de el espacio de bosque que protegemos en la Reserva Drácula. Estamos nosotros buscando los argumentos legales para, para defender la Reserva Drácula y encontramos en un sitio que debería ser parte de la zona intangible del bosque, donde se trabajó probablemente entre una o dos semanas invadiendo la propiedad de, del señor. Buscan oro. 
Uh, se conoce que oro es el principal eh, elemento por el que están dadas estas concesiones. To strengthen their argument, the Ecominga team is documenting biological riches that could be lost if mining isn't stopped. Esta, por ejemplo, esta especie de orquídea la encontramos en nuestro último viaje. Es un, una especie nueva que tiene que ser descrita. Esta es la última especie de, la, de dragón espinoso, espinoso. Eh, que hemos publicado en el mes es de diciembre. Famoso. Esta es una rana, por ejemplo, que todavía no sabemos cuál es la, la población. En estos elementos súper endémicos, específicos. Cuando se extingue una especie no se puede reparar. O sea, nosotros lo que hemos usado muchísimo en los casos eh, de derechos de la naturaleza y citando justamente a la Constitución, el artículo 73, que te dice justamente el Estado aplicará medidas de precaución y restricción para las actividades que puedan conducir a la extensión de especies. The law states that any action that could lead to extinction, either by eradicating a species or destroying its critical habitat, is prohibited. This law has been on the books since 2008, yet mining on ecologically vulnerable land continues. One local community recently went to battle over the fate of a cloud forest reserve called Los Cedros, another biodiversity hotspot with many endemic species. Los Cedros is a protected forest. And in Ecuador, within a protected forest, you cannot do agriculture, you cannot do cattling, but you can do mining, eh, which is completely absurd. In 2018, several indigenous tribes in Los Cedros sued the national government after it granted mining concessions to almost three quarters of the reserve's land without consulting the tribes. Their legal team made the rights of nature central to their argument. The fight took three years and was ultimately decided by the highest legal power in the country, the Constitutional Court. Its resounding verdict upheld the law of the land. Nature's rights prevailed. Nosotros hemos logrado ganar el caso de los cedros porque existía la investigación de qué había en esa área. Experts on orchids, on monkeys, on frogs, on different plants came to the judge and told them how important this space was. The Constitutional Court uh, ruled in favor of nature and banned mining as an activity that can happen in such a biodiverse place. The court also issued another major ruling. The rights of nature pertain not only to protected areas and reserves. They apply to any land throughout the country. Entonces lo que tú me presentas ahorita es clave y es importantísimo porque es poder sensibilizar a los jueces, a las personas de qué es lo que estamos tratando de salvar. Cuando ven físicamente lo que estamos perdiendo, cuando conocen a las especies, cuando conocen a ese dragón, a, esa, a ese Drácula, ¿no es cierto?, a esa ranita, entonces sí. les tenemos, ¿no es cierto?, entendemos lo que podemos perder. The Dracula team has clear marching orders. They need to do as much surveying and species identification as they can. Hey, this is my favorite people. So nice to see you. You survived. I'm sorry to just leave you alone on the forest. <laughs> Finding new species is actually relatively common. Every expedition I've been on, we've come home with a list of potential new species to science. This plot is almost entirely unexplored by scientists. That means that we have a lot of work to do very quickly. Their work will bolster their case and deepen their understanding of this complex ecosystem. So here we have a beautiful Anolis Dracula, also referred to as South American chameleons. With this animal, we'll just be taking pictures and taking a small little tail clip for DNA sampling, and then we'll, we'll let him on his way. Aquí tenemos una eh, ranita del género Pristimantis. No sabemos exactamente qué especie es. Entonces, es importante tomar fotos, tomar un punto GPS, eh, usar esta aplicación que es iNaturalist y también eh, reconocer algunos patrones en la coloración, en la morfología, que nos puedan ayudar a identificar qué especie es. Es muy divertido. 
part of the experience is seeing the look on the expert's face when they see something that they have never seen in, in their course of study. Just lights up. I can't identify it. We only know of about two million species on the planet out of an estimated eight to nine million. So we've only scratched the surface of what lives here. Here we have a salamander. This is gonna be a new species for the science. And it's the second time that I'm watching this. We only have pictures the first time, but now we can have a, a sample. Different levels of creatures live from the very, very bottom of each tree to the canopy. Every level have different plants, different shapes, different species. These small species have one chance to be recognized, not only as an object. They are subjects, all right. These creatures give us the chance to play, to save these places. This is the reason why I am working here. Every new species they find now has a fighting chance to still be here generations from now. Finley's legacy is very much alive in Reserva. Remember that she's not here to take action, so I have to. And that helps me keep going. La naturaleza el día de hoy no tiene tiempo. Hemos eh, hecho un esfuerzo bien grande para defender este, este tema. Pero eh, no es fácil. Para mí, Reserva es mi fuente de inspiración de cada día. <risa>